fibromyalgia. I want to talk today about fibromyalgia and a different treatment strategy that you may have not heard of. So I'm Dr. Robert Fredrickson, health nut chiropractor who's interested in ways to heal naturally. And so fibromyalgia is one of the things that I come in contact a lot. Patients who have fibromyalgia, patients who have dealt with fibromyalgia, or patients who are current or doctors who are uh, currently dealing with fibromyalgia patients. And if anyone knows or doesn't know what fibromyalgia is, it's a painful, widespread pain condition. Typically, it's people with fibromyalgia also have fatigue, they also have memory issues, sleep issues, and also bowel issues. Usually when a doctor is diagnosing fibromyalgia, they are looking at every other disease, doing a differential diagnosis, and as long as the patient doesn't have those other diseases and they have nothing else to decide on, usually it's a exclusion criteria to say, hey, we're going to deem this a fibromyalgia syndrome. So typically it used to be we're going to look for different points that are painful, right, which is subjective, so it's kind of hard to tell. There's no specific, to, to this date, there's no specific lab analysis or genetic test that can lead to a specific diagnosis component, which means it's tricky. So a lot of people who have fibromyalgia can tell you, hey, there's some good days and there's some bad, and it's kind of hard to know what's causing it, right? So I've been on the look for a lot of different fibromyalgia treatments, natural treatments, right? as far as my, supporting the mitochondria, supporting magnesium, which all have some pretty good you know, research behind them as well. But one thing I wanted to point out today is gut, specifically gut health, that has been linked to SIBO. Okay, so SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And there's actually a study from the Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, which had a profound study on linking SIBO to fibromyalgia. So this was huge. They actually found in the study that 42 out of 42 participants with fibromyalgia all had SIBO. Another crazy statistic in their study is that they were looking at pain, in particular the fibro patients. The more of the uh, hydrogen producing bacteria based on the SIBO testing, the higher amount of the uh, bacteria actually showed higher amounts of pain in the fibromyalgia patients, okay? So is the SIBO causing fibromyalgia or is the fibromyalgia causing SIBO? We don't know at this point, but it leads to some interesting clinical insights. For instance, SIBO does have some main causes that we think is causing this um, fermentation in these small intestines, okay? One of those is hypochloridia, which is low stomach acid. Basically, this happens as we get older, happens over the age of 40. But if we lose the ability to produce stomach acid, we lose the ability to break down pathogenic bacteria. We have a hard time breaking down food. We actually have a hard time digesting food because of this. Another known cause of SIBO is slow motility, okay? So sluggish bowel movements. So there are muscles in our gastrointestinal tract uh, that produce peristalsis, which is a smooth muscle contractile tissue that's producing motion to move bowel and waste through our intestines. Now there's also some cells that are called migrating motor complexes that help accomplish this. Now if you have a sluggish bowel or you have sluggish bowel movements, sluggish motility, there's a chance that some of these bacteria aren't getting you know, pushed down how they should and they're actually having a chance to come back up causing some of these SIBO symptoms. Another cause of some of these SIBO uh, symptoms is hypothyroidism which actually has a direct connection to some of these motility issues as well. Okay, how do we link this to fiber? Well, fibromyalgia, there are some hypotheses that it's from low stomach acid. That is, low stomach acid actually will make more calcium come into the bloodstream and come into the muscles. So if we have, we have too much calcium in our muscles, we're gonna have too much muscle spasm. So that's why a lot of the magnesium treatments are effective for helping fibromyalgia because they can actually, magnesium balances calcium. So they have a very inverse relationship, okay? And so I've actually heard some doctors actually say that low stomach acid is correlated with fibro because of the calcium ion magnesium exchange, right? There's too much calcium, not enough magnesium. That's why some of these muscles are contracting. So needless to say, I'm excited about this research because there might be some hope for some fibromyalgia patients that maybe they've tried everything else. They've been on the painkillers. They've been on the opioids. Um, 
they're having trouble sleeping and if if you're not sleeping you're not healing right so i think maybe we could look at the gut as one of the primary sources of uh, what's causing some of these fibro cases and see maybe if treating the gut maybe doing a SIBO protocol can help with the fibro symptoms so in closing SIBO small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and fibromyalgia is a widespread pain condition and they're both really symptoms if you think about it they're not a true diagnosis if you will but maybe by linking the symptoms and maybe by linking some of the underlying root causes of both of these and why they're kind of correlated together can lead to some further clinical insights down the road. So I'm Dr. Robert Fredrickson. I hope you found this insightful. If you did, share this with a friend, share this with a doctor who may be interested in learning more about treating fibromyalgia, looking at some of the research that I've looked at. And I'll also post some of the links for the research below so that you can also share this with your clinician in mind as well. So I'm going to sign out. If you found this interesting though, before you do sign out, follow me, uh, link this, uh, hit that subscribe button down below so we can get this out to more people and so that I know to make more videos like this to help you on your health journey. I'm Dr. Robert again and we'll see you next time.